Actually, right now we are trying to get more details on this power plant, exactly what it supplies power-wise. I do know that there is water rushing into the basement, and there are people over there right now working to try and put the sandbags around it. There already was a, a giant sandbag wall around there, but they're trying to desperately pump the water out of it in order to do the best they can to try and salvage whatever they can. There is a some frantic people running around over there trying to figure out what exactly they need to do to stop the water from coming through. Now again at this point it is really unclear what would happen if uh, this particular plant went offline because we're not exactly sure what it powers precisely here on the University of Iowa campus and we have people right now literally making phone calls for us that are here on the campus trying to talk to the people who have that kind of information and as soon as we have that those details we'll let you know but we did want to let you know that there is water rushing into there there was a, a nice sandbag effort going on there earlier but it just apparently it's just not holding back the water and you can see this is where the power plant is and if we just let's pan the camera over this way and this is where we were showing you earlier. This is all of the sandbags that is in front of the Lindquist Center here at the University of Iowa. And one person described the Lindquist Center to me as the brains of the University of Iowa. And what they mean by that is this is where all of the computer data is stored, or at least most of it, for the University of Iowa. And they're just very, very concerned that if that kind of stuff gets wet, they could lose all kinds of data and all kinds of information that is obviously critical for a university of this size. That's why those sandbag walls are so high as well. They've seen that how high this water can come up. In lots of other places, they didn't build those sandbag walls quite that high. And I think now there's just you know no telling how high or how far up this river water is going to come. And so that's why they're just working so diligently here. And you know every few minutes or so, you see people walking up here saying, what can I do to help? What can I do to help? They still need a lot of help down here. It is a, it's a Saturday morning still here. If you have nothing to do, come down here and help these people out. You know The, the ones that have been here, many of them have been here since 9 o'clock this morning. This is not easy work here. That's very heavy sandbags, as we said before. It's not your typical small sandbag that you see in a lot of situations. These almost look like the size of kitchen trash bags, and they're filling them full of sand. And you can imagine, those are pretty heavy, and um, you know, people are starting to get sore here, and I'm sure it could, they could use some relief here, but a lot of people, you know, no one here is going to complain, I'll tell you that right now, um, because this is just such a critical piece of the University of Iowa that they're working on. And like we showed you over, you know, right around the corner, that's where the power plant is, and that's how close they are to where they're already getting water. Hey, the library, we're told they've already sandbagged that enough. Yes? Uh, we have a question for you real quick. A uh, question on the power plant, sure. of course, where the water's coming in. This is University of Iowa power plant, correct? That is right, the University of Iowa power plant. Okay. And so, and like I said, right now there's just some confusion as to exactly what it powers on the University of Iowa. We've heard various uh, conflicting stories, and so they are literally on the phone right now. I see the people from the University of Iowa here making calls to the university officials who have that kind of information um, to get the best clear answer for everyone here at this point. But, you know, we're still working on those details. Um, so at this moment, the only real thing we can say is that there is water going into the I University of Iowa's power plant and you know the sandbag effort they had there just is not holding up and what you're looking at right now on, on a live picture is again the sandbagging effort which continues it, you can just kind of see I don't know if we can see the, the crawling up that giant mound of sand there are people standing on top of it that's how high the sand is and I'm telling you that sand is going to be gone I'd say within 20 20 30 minutes to give you an idea of how quickly people are working here how just many, incredible it's just intense how many people would you say are down there helping I would say more than a hundred people at this point and you know what there is st there's still plenty of room for others to come down here and help out with this effort if you just take a look at that pile of sand it, it just is intimidating to see that and to know that that's all going to be inside bags just to, you know in, in about an hour I would say that whole mound would be gone and they have trucks coming through here continuously back and forth driving down the street full of sand, full of the bags themselves, full of the ties they use to tie the top of the bag. Um, just a very, very frantic effort going on here at the University of Iowa because they just have no idea when the water could get here. You know, it's been unpredictable all along. You might remember up in Cedar Rapids, a lot of those businesses downtown, they didn't really have hardly any sandbags in front of their, in front of their doors because they thought, oh, the, the river's never going to get this far. Mm -hmm. And I think the people in Iowa City are kind of learning from that and saying, 
you just you can't predict this. You know, it could get this far. It might not ever reach here, and of course that would be the best case scenario. But you just never know. Yeah, we were looking at a map earlier at this press conference of the area that the water went in Cedar Rapids, way beyond the 500-year floodplain. And, and Mark, I did have a question. Now, where are you standing exactly right now? Are you on the Burlington Bridge? I want to say. I, no, I'm not on okay. the bridge at all. I'm, I'm right. I'm right here with okay. the library. The University of Iowa Library is right there, and this is the Lindquist Center right Got here, it. which we were describing as as the uh, kind of the brain of the university. That's what they're calling it here. Uh, how much vehicle traffic have you been seeing going back and forth? Because on one of the shots where the camera panned, we did see plenty of uh, cars and trucks going. I mean, is there a sense of anxiety? Hang on, Chris, I've, oh, got, yeah. I've got somebody. Chris, sorry to interrupt you. I've oh, got no. somebody from the university here. Uh, this is Rod Leonard's, yeah. and you can tell us some more about the power plant and what's happening there. Yeah, we're going to have a uh, press conference at 1 o'clock that's going to give a full detail on where things are on several issues with respect to our campus. And the power plant is at the lower level, connected by tunnels. It is, it is taking on water. It was taking on water last night. We made a uh, safety move to uh, take the power plant down early this morning. We, our top priority is the hospital. We have uh, temporary boilers that provide not only steam, which is still necessary this time of year, but also the steam that powers our chillers. And so we keep the, the hospital going. We do have some electric chillers on this side of the campus. So the campus is not shut down, but it's certainly hampering our ability to keep, uh, frankly, keep uh, straight line performance in the buildings that we've got. Uh, they continue to work uh, diligently over at, the, uh, uh, over at the power plant. We're bringing in uh, some temporary uh, uh, boilers this morning. Uh, they arrived, actually arrived at about 11.30 last night. They're being assembled now, one for the east, one for the west. We obviously want to keep attention on the hospital and make sure that that's taken care of. And then we also look to fortify what we can on the, um, on the uh, east side of the river. Is this supplying actual power or just steam and air conditioning? These are boilers. These boilers provide the steam that does provide steam for the campus, but that steam is also what uh, powers our chilled water plants. And the chilled water plants provide the cold water used to cool the buildings. And so to keep these buildings cool, we ironically need steam. And, uh, and that is what we turned off for safety purposes last night, what we continue to battle, but are also bringing in fortifications for that in temporary uh, boilers currently. So if this were to go off, it would affect like the air conditioning in a sense in, in, in the hospital? Yeah, it, well, air conditioning, steam production, those things, critical functions for the hospital. And so we do have uh, temporary uh, backup for the hospital, and we are bringing an additional, uh, installing an additional uh, boiler at the current moment uh, for the west side and one for the east side. Of course, people are going to start to worry. You might remember in Mercy Hospital in Cedar Rapids, they, they had to evacuate. Is there any threat of that here now at all? No, we are, are putting our attention there. We are, even without what we're doing right now, we've got the services that are allowing us to serve the hospital. What we're bringing in, these, these uh, new boilers, these temporary boilers that are being installed, will fortify that and take care of that. We have um, no specific concerns, though I would also relay that uh, or relay uh, you to the 1 o'clock meeting. Uh, where we will be uh, giving briefings on several things related to the university campus, including the utilities. Our director of utilities and energy management, uh, Glenn Mowry, is going to be present at that, and they will be uh, briefing everybody on the very latest related to that information. So at this point, this isn't even operating right now. There's water coming into it, but there's just backup generators have taken over. Sense. Correct. We actually uh, have had two temporary boilers on site before the floods began. They are operating. We have a temporary boiler that is coming in on this side, one on the west side, and we had uh, smaller operation boilers on the west side that are still functioning. And basically, how critical is, is the stuff that is in the basement over there at the power plant? Is there a lot of material that, you know, once it gets wet, it's done for? Well, not unlike any other building we have on campus, the cleanup's going to be considerable. But uh, it is cleanup for the most part. And uh, I wouldn't want to dive into uh, Glenn Mowry's expertise and, and talk about the specific cleanup for the power plant. But certainly our bigger concerns were related to the power systems in the power plant, the water getting too close to electrical systems, those kinds of things. And that's where we need to shut down to make sure that we are ensuring the safety long-term safety of the power plant, but also for the workers that are in that area. And just to clear up confusion, because I think when people hear power plant, they think if the power plant goes out, then the university is going to lose electricity and the hospital is going to lose electricity. This is considered a power plant, but it's basically supplying the air conditioning in a sense, in the most basic form, right? Yeah, the, the, 